a blank page, a sharp pencil, a venue for wild thoughts and creative wonderings. What better way is there to foster a love of writing than to give students the opportunity to put pencil to paper on a regular basis? And while we believe that any time spent writing is good, focus time spent writing is one of the best tools teachers have in their repertoire. With that in mind, we will take time to discuss in detail the proven tips to make your students good writers and readers. Welcome to episode 54 of the Teacher Rockstar Podcast, a place where tips and strategies critical to the new teacher are discussed. I'm your host, Steve Hiles, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how you can create an effective writer's workshop. With that said, let's dive right in. You know, I've always told my students that we will only write on days that end in Y. And I have to tell you, they really got a big kick out of it. Well, at any rate, it has been proven if you want to improve your writing, the most effective way to achieve that goal is to write and write a lot. Writing gives your inner voice a gateway to come out, and it helps you refine your thoughts and manner of saying what you wish to say. Writing focuses students on phonics, comprehension, mechanics, developing their voice or perspective, and communicating this perspective to others. Gone are the days of diagramming sentences. Balanced literacy focuses on developing the many skills that good readers and writers possess in an authentic method of communication. Writing makes for better readers and improves comprehension and critical thinking. Once a teacher understands what is involved in becoming a better writer, they can focus on teaching their students to write. To effectively foster a community of budding young writers, teachers need to create an environment that is safe, encourages risk, and provides the support for learning the skills essential to the craft of writing. Balanced literacy provides the teacher with many opportunities to model writing for their students, thereby infusing the skills necessary for their students to develop. Now, the first step is always to observe the writer and his or her writing. From there, teachers can comment on success, note a teaching point, guide content, and far more advanced writers offer examples of good writing so that the student can apply what is appropriate. Now, I'd like to go ahead and talk about the stages of writing development. People experience predictable stages of development while gaining skills. Before you learn to drive, for example, you had to learn about the parts of the car, what the gas and brake pedals were for, and how to start the engine. It took much practice, first on empty streets or parking lots, then on quiet roads before you were ready to drive in traffic. Language development also occurs in predictable stages. Babies coo, mimic sounds, learn one-word identifiers for what they want, and eventually put it all together to form coherent words and sentences. Conversely, writers begin with scribbles, evolve to picture, and eventually begin to use letters to represent sounds. From these basic skills, they can later create words, sentences, stories. There is no limit. It is vital for teachers to understand the stages of writing so they can help their kids advance to higher levels. You know, it is a rare class that contains students who are all on the same functional level. Balanced literacy allows teachers to bring students to a higher level no matter where on the continuum they are. Before we move forward, I want to share a message from our sponsor. Are you interested in improving your classroom management skills? Well, if you're a brand spanking new teacher, or perhaps a student teacher, or maybe you're a teacher returning back into the classroom, the Teacher Rockstar Academy course is for you. Gain the confidence, the skills you'll need to crush it on day one and beyond. Enroll now at the TeacherRockstarAcademy.com. That's TeacherRockstarAcademy.com. I promise you that this will be a transformational experience. Okay, picking up where we left off, the writing process is a cycle repeated many times. It is a process that teachers must master themselves before passing their knowledge along to students. Pre-writing 
is the first stage, and this happens consciously or unconsciously. Knowing that you have to compose a document, you will probably mull over ideas in your head before you ever set pen to paper. Students may need guidance in formulating ideas, and this stage of the process is designed to stimulate thoughts. This can be an extensive process, though, sometimes taking more time than the actual writing, and that's okay. The first draft gets ideas on paper without much concern for mechanics. It is the starting point from which all future versions will flow. After looking over a draft or sharing it with another reader, a writer will begin to revise by checking for content, organization, and clarity. The next phase is editing, where the mechanics of writing are reviewed. Sentence structure, spelling, punctuation, and grammar are considered. With these challenges in mind, asking your students to write without teaching them the essentials of writing will lead to nowhere. After all, writing is a skill that can be learned, and like every other skill, some individuals will learn it much more swiftly than others. Some might struggle, and some will not be interested in learning writing at all. We all observe life from our individual perspective from a very early age. Now that we communicate using email and other electronic ways, it is well worth to learn the art of effective writing as early in life as possible. From here on, we will talk about what it takes to set up a successful writer's workshop. But before we do, here's another quick word from our sponsor. Imagine this. Imagine having access to educational products, instructional videos, top-rated teacher podcasts, and articles for just pennies a day. Wouldn't that be awesome? And you know what the best part is? You get a seven-day free trial. So really, what do you have to lose? Go ahead, check it out, take a look around. Go to MyTeacherMembership.com. That's MyTeacherMembership.com. And I will be adding more products each and every month. You're going to love being part of this teacher membership community. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and talk about 16 tips for establishing an effective writer's workshop. Number one. Keep writing tools handy. Give your students the tools for success in writer's workshop by making the resources they need available in a central location. Having a set place in class to store the students' work in progress folders, along with sharp pencils, erasers, and reference books, would be a great thing to do. Start with a read aloud. Great writing often starts with reading great literature, as they are reciprocal operations of each other. So inspire your students to excel in the writing workshop by reading aloud a favorite short story or a poem that acts as a springboard to that day's mini lesson. I usually kept my mini lessons to around 10 to 15 minutes, but no more than that. Number two, keep the timer going. It's natural that some kids write more quickly than others. So while one may be adding the finishing touches to their piece, another will still be brainstorming. Set the expectations that the purpose of writer's workshop is to write for a specific amount of time, not until a piece is done. If someone isn't finished when the timer dings, just set the work aside to finish it during another workshop. Number three, have a routine. Set clear expectations about how you expect writer's workshop to work. For example, start with a mini lesson and finish with a peer critique. Keep that routine consistent so kids can focus on what matters, putting pencil to paper. Number four, model the writing process first. Very critical here. Some kids struggle with understanding what it takes to write. One of the best tools you can give your kids is to model the writing process by thinking aloud as you compose a piece from brainstorming to final edits. This process of modeling may take some time, but it gives your kids an invaluable glimpse into how a writing mind works. Number five, allow for flexibility. Writer's Workshop is an innately flexible activity. Capitalize on that by allowing your kids to process their writing in the way that naturally works for them. If one kid outlines first while another one skips all the pre-writing steps and immediately starts drafting, don't worry about stringent rules, but instead praise the individuality of each child's process. Number six, have some fun. Try having your students write about their messy rooms, the plight of homework, or what they would do in a zombie attack. Indulging a fun aspect in writing allows students to unleash their creativity. 
they should never feel forced to follow a set path while maintaining the goals of the workshop. Number eight, switch up your objectives. One day have your students write with the purpose of practicing organization. And then next have them write for word choice. That way kids get specific practice focusing on a variety of writing skills. Tip number seven, never skip peer feedback. There is a temptation uh, to skip small group feedback or critique in order to save time. But this is one of the most valuable components of the writer's workshop process. Always make sure that your students have the opportunity to work in small groups to critique and hone their work. Number eight, give teacher feedback too. Always spend time reading your students' work and giving them feedback. There's value in writing, but even more value in learning from the mistakes and accomplishments of the writing process. Tip number nine, keep inspiration handy. Always keep a variety of writing samples available for your kids to read and use for inspiration if they get stuck. Like sharing examples of your own writing makes for a great mini lesson. Number 10, write across the curriculum. Try facilitating a writer's workshop during science or math class and have your students write about what they are learning or respond to an assignment or concept. Number 11, turn writer's workshop into a classroom discussion. Writing is a great segue into meaningful conversation. Always plan a thematic writer's workshop the day before you plan to have a classroom discussion on the same topic. That way the students have already processed and organized their thoughts and are ready to think deeply as the class converses. Number 12. Always give your students a choice. While it's essential that a teacher guide student writing, for example, have you ever tried to tell your classroom to just write something? It's also essential that kids have choice in their writing. Provide a group of writing prompts that center on a theme and allow your kids to decide which direction to run with their words. Number 13, host a coffee shop celebration of writing. Now what do I mean by that? Well, allow your aspiring authors to share their work with the entire class if they desire. Pull up a special chair and allow the featured author or authors to share what they wrote. I've done this many times in my classroom, and the kids really love doing this. Number 14, keep work to show growth. Many teachers keep their students writing either in a journal or a folder. Either way, make sure you keep all work together in one place so your students can measure their own writing progress and go back and read old pieces for comments and ideas. Number 15, Demonstrate your love of writing. Show your students how much you love writing by choosing to spend the writer's workshop time journaling or writing for yourself. Be sure to read your work out loud, too. And the last point, number 16, don't stop at writer's workshop. It's easy to separate the writer's workshop from the rest of instruction, but this is a waste of precious instructional resources. It's key to explain to students that writing doesn't end at Writer's Workshop, it only begins there. With that said, we have come to the end of today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Teacher Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Hiles. We hope you've enjoyed listening to these tips and strategies regarding how to create an effective Writer's Workshop. When you get a moment, visit my blog and subscribe to my newsletter for the latest educational research, best practices, and unadvertised free bonuses. Simply go to Steve's Classroom Resources dot blogspot dot com and don't forget to subscribe to us at the teacher rockstar podcast and if you'd like to support us please feel free to share our podcast with others post about it on social media or leave a rating and review that would be greatly appreciated thanks again we'll see you same time same place next week and remember my friend you got this